Hi everybody, my name is Kathy Corian. I'm a registered nurse at Peace Health United General Medical Center in the recovery room. And I'm also nurse faculty here at Skagit Valley College. So welcome, come on in and I'll show you a few things about medical science career paths in STEM. There are a lot of different organs that we have here. This is organ Paul or Paula will be able to help you kind of see what looks like what it looks like inside your body and so here you have eyeballs you got the brain you can see the skull area and then you go down into the chest and so you see the lungs here you see the heart and we can actually open this guy and if we were in classroom in person I'd be having you guys do a puzzle game and pull this all apart and make you guys put it back together but maybe we'll get to do that again sometime in the future so here is the heart so as you can see you want to think about maybe you might want to be a heart doctor what do you think a heart doctor is what would that be called that would be a cardiologist so that would be somebody that's studying the different uh, functions of the heart caring for patients that have heart conditions and so you can see the heart has four chambers and you really kind of dive into being a specialist for that the lungs which sit right here which in, in your lungs and you'll see that this would be what type of doctor this would be a pulmonologist. So a pulmonologist takes care of patients who have any kind of lung conditions. And we will talk more a little bit in detail when we get to see our pig lungs that you get to see. Um, we have um, also just internal organs. So there's a gastroenterologist that would be a doctor that would take care of any kind of GI problems. And then you have also any vascular doctors um, and then if you step into seeing um, the bone guy, you see the uh, skeleton back here. So there are how many bones in the human body? Can anybody tell me? There are 206 bones in your body. And you also have cartilage. So you see in your rib cage, some areas are a little bit softer than others. But the ribs and the bones are what help protect a lot of the organs that are in the body. So this helps us to stay alive, because if you fall and you get hurt, you're not gonna injure the organs. So our bones have a specific uh, role. And so this doctor that would take care of this uh, bo broken bones would be what? It would be an orthopedic surgeon. And so that's another opportunity. Anybody know what an x-ray is? An x-ray is when you're able to take a picture and actually see the inside of your bone. So here's a picture of lungs. And so they could see if there's anything wrong with the lung lobes. And um, here's a picture of somebody getting an x-ray. Has anybody had an x-ray before? And I'm sure if you've had a, a sick in the lungs, if you've had broken bones, that's what you would use, get an x-ray for. And if you are a radiologist, you would be the doctor of radiology. So this is kind of a picture of all of the things they would be looking at to see what was wrong, if they needed to do anything about that. So as you can see, this is just the beginning. There's a lot of different things that you could do as a medical professional in the STEM, pro, uh, STEM career path. You also have, in regards to bones, so orthopedic surgeons can also be a spine. They could be a spine surgeon or a neurosurgeon because we have all kinds of nerves that control our bodies and what we do. And so we have doctors that are specialists and actually can do surgery on their spines to help fix things like limbs that aren't working properly or maybe neurological issues that are happening. So, and then of course, um, you have a neurologist again, like I said, for the brain. So there's a lot of variety in the medical uh, career path. And so always just be curious and go and investigate because you might find your true passion. Okay, so right now we're going to get started with some pig lungs as an activity. But to get started, I'm going to have Sean, who's going to be helping me. And so we're going to go ahead and first get started with dressing, because if he's going to be a surgeon, he's going to have to get dressed up. And if you were with me here today, I'd ask one of you guys to be here with me. And this is what you would wear to protect yourself so you don't get blood on you and you don't expose yourself. 
So just like we have to wear our PPE, which is our mask to protect ourselves from getting sick and exposed to anything, it'd be the same with us getting ready for surgery. So here's what a surgeon would look like. And he would have some sterile gloves on and he's gonna put a, also a shield over his eyes for prevention of any splatter. And then we're gonna go ahead and just kinda get a feel for what these lungs are like. So I'm gonna have you hold the lungs just gently open like this and not squeeze. Um, or you can kind of touch and feel. So can you tell the students just what, what does that feel like? <laughs> just gently. Yeah. yeah, pretty spongy, kind of cool um, to the touch. Um, yeah, they feel, nice. they feel interesting. Okay, so now hold them out. Just hold them down just a little or flatter like that. Okay, so now I want everybody to take a nice deep breath in and hold it. And exhale now. And we're going to do that again one more time. We're going to take a deep breath in and watch the lungs and hold it. And exhale. So did you see what happened? Okay, you can let those down. So when you saw the lungs expand, what were you breathing in? Yeah, that's right. You were breathing in oxygen. So when you exhaled and you let all the air out of your body, what were you exhaling? That's right, it was carbon dioxide. So you learned that in science, right? And so the, these are some things that you're gonna have to learn with how you're gonna learn the anatomy and the physiology of your body. And so a pulmonologist would have to know all these details and really understand the normal of a lung. So let's come over here and look at this lung. Sean, can you tell me what does that feel like? Um. Similar, but a little bit more uh, like dense, a little bit tougher, but still that kind of cool to the touch and soft. But yeah, they definitely feel more like, hard. Hard. And you notice that there's some even little. It's like a lot harder here. Oh yeah, on the outside. Yeah, there's some areas more. that are a little softer. Um, but what what kind of patient do you think would have these kinds of lungs? What do you think? I mean, you, you said earlier that the pig wasn't a smoker, but that right. was my first guess. A so. smoker. Yeah, smoking, vaping, long time, long term exposure to any kind of uh, smoke like we have lately. We've had smoke and fires over the, the summertime. And so any kind of uh, environmental causes, um, any cancers, anything like that. So um, and any also there's also other things, but just watch and see what happens when we fill these lungs up. Now try to take a deep breath. Just watch this. Oh. You see? Mm -hmm. Is this is this lung circulating a lot of oxygen? It sure isn't. No. So kind of think, how would a patient or a person feel if they had lungs like these? Again, a pulmonologist or a physician, a family practice nurse, uh, to anybody that works in the medical field, I consider us investigators. We would be more like investigators. So you have to know the right things, the normal things, and that's where you go to medical school, you go to nursing school, you go to radiology school, or any other medical fields that you would like. And that way, if you decide maybe you want to take care of patients who have sick lungs, you'll be able to really be the specialist to really kind of help with that. And again, in your classwork, you're going to learn you're going to really focus on your sciences. You have to know your math really well. You need to know how to read and write, you know, your English, your math, your sciences, and any other things that are interesting to you that are in the healthcare field are going to help you to really understand it better when you get into the medical field. The type of training that I had for being a registered nurse is I originally went to Loma Linda University and I got my bachelor's degree, which is a four-year degree. Um, and then I graduated with my master's degree 21 years later, so it's never too late to learn. So I went back and got my master's degree in leadership and management in nursing. And then also received my certification in nursing professional development because I believe in education and want to support um, staff and also students in the future. What skills are important for my job as a nurse are to be able to have excellent um, math, science, and also be able to have compassion 
and kindness, love when you're caring for patients because you're going to be in people's lives for very small periods of time. And so it's important that not only do you have knowledge about the sciences and everything, but that you bring your heart to it. And that's what I really love about nursing. My career is unique because I can go anywhere around the world. I can do my job in any place. And uh, if I get bored in one area or am disinterested in a, in a place that I've been at for a while, you can move to another place. I've worked in a variety of different areas, like med surge, in the ICU. I've worked in surgery, which is my favorite. I worked in recovery room and short stay surgery. And, uh, and now I'm teaching in the college at Skagit Valley College, and so you are right here in a classroom. So what's unique to me is that I could be a teacher, which I am right now, and also a mentor, and, um, and that is exciting because you can go a long way if you don't want to work with um, a specific place. You can work with babies, you can work with children, you can work with adults, and you can work in the community. The best part of my job is the fact that I get to take care of people. And um, when you get to be a part of somebody's life when they're not feeling well, or you get to be welcoming the life of a new baby, or be there to comfort somebody who's dying, um, it's a special, it, it's a special place. And uh, I'm just honored to be able to be able to do this job. The toughest part of my job as a nurse is the fact that healthcare is constantly changing every day. I work in a hospital as well as working here at the college, and so every week there's always something new. And so as you continue on and decide maybe to go in a healthcare field, things may be a lot different or a little more different than uh, it is for me. Um, but you always have to constantly keep yourself updated and current and, and keep educated and learning and growing so that you can be the best at the bedside and caring for patients no matter what field in the medical field that you may be working at. I love it and I don't have any, even though it's tough sometimes, um, it's, it's the best profession ever. This job impacts the community in many ways, and you can be in the home with community health nursing. You could also work in uh, any kind of hospital setting, clinics. Um, you can do travel nursing, which I did travel nursing for four and a half years, so it's fun to go to different hospitals and see how different places operate, meet new people, try new places, and still do the job that I really love and I'm passionate about. What kind of grades did I get in school? Do I really have to share that? <laughs> um, it was really tough for me when I was younger because my mom is Filipino and she's first generation, I'm first generation born in the United States and so English was not her first language and she also did not graduate from high school. So we didn't get the help that we needed at home and she did her best, love my mom and I'm very grateful for just being able to be supported to do the things I love. Um, so it was hard. I didn't really get good grades uh, when I was in my earlier years. At least I can't remember, but I know in high school I, tr I strive to do my best, and that's really all I could do. I used all my resources that I could get and any help, you know, any extracurricular activities on top of any extra credit and things like that. So it's all about using my resources, and that's really what got me. And I was very driven, and I wanted to do it and I made it happen, so yeah. So my grades were just average, they weren't straight A's, but you don't need straight A's to be an excellent nurse. Sometimes you just have to make sure that you do your best. What you need to know about my job and any job in the healthcare field is that it's important for you to take time to investigate and do some volunteering in the hospitals or clinics or follow anybody that you feel is inspirational to you that maybe you might want to be. So if you want to come follow a, a nurse, which I did when I was in high school, I volunteered to be a candy striper, which is equivalent to a volunteer hospital, um, maybe a Red Cross volunteer or something like that. But um, I had the opportunity to go into a hospital when I was a senior 
and help and uh, labor and delivery and newborn nursery because that's where I thought I wanted to work and um, at least I was able to see and I also wanted to go into the military so it was actually a military hospital that I volunteered at so I could see how they operate and uh, it was really wonderful and eye-opening and it helped me to see that yes I'm going in the right path so um, it's very important to take some time to just get out there and follow and um, observe, do some job shadowing, because then that way, once you get into your colleges, you'll know exactly which directions you want to head and use your time wisely and, and get to your dream.